Welcome to my little presentation on stakeholder theory. The first question you need to answer is which stakeholder theory? Yes, there's more than one. In fact, there's two. Only one is of direct interest to this unit though. First of all, there's stakeholder theory, the ethical branch of stakeholder theory, and stakeholder theory, the managerial branch. That's the one we're interested in. But first we need to do a little side-by-side -side comparison of the two. So the ethical branch is a normative theory. And it basically states that uh, organisations should, and there's the clue for being normative, organisations should consult uh, with all its stakeholders when making decisions. Uh, it promotes ethical values. So it's interested in value, uh, it's interested in what an organisation should do. Therefore, it's a normative theory. And it states that firms should not only consult, but address the needs of all stakeholders. The managerial branch of stakeholder, on the other hand, uh, is an empirical theory. It can be positivist, although there are, other, there are other ways of being empirical. It has no interest in ethical values. It is a value-free theory. And it states that firms will move to address the needs of its most powerful stakeholders. So when we come to think of what voluntary disclosures a firm will make, if we try and predict that, stakeholder theory says the answer is it will make disclosures that put it in the best light with its most powerful and influential stakeholders. So under the managerial branch of stakeholder theory, the stakeholder's power is manifested by his or her or its ability to control the flow of resources into the firm. So when you think, if you're a company in Australia, uh, who are very powerful and influential stakeholders, the majority st shareholders are, um, key investors or investor um, advisors, banks, federal government and regulators such as ASIC, these are very powerful people. And of course, our good friend, the tax office. So when asked the question, what, reg what disclosures will a firm make? Well, for example, if, um, if the federal government is um, putting out signals that it's uh, seriously considered a Royal Commission into the big banks in Australia, then the big banks are hardly going to make disclosures that uh, feed the story that they're basically taking us all for granted and just ripping us off for huge profits. They're unlikely to make those disclosures. They are, however, likely to make disclosures about um, how they're helping businesses in Australia, how they're, being, uh, how they're building up a war chest to withstand another global financial crisis and so on. Uh, the managerial branch of stakeholder theory has been popular for examining uh, disclosure decisions for environmental and sustainable reporting, for example, and we will discuss this more in the next module. There are problems with stakeholder theory. Uh, first of all, the confusion that can come from having two theories of the same name. So if you're doing research on stakeholder theory, for example, it's a very good idea to work out which one you're reading about. Uh, positivist theories often claim that they can predict or understand the motivation of managers, but the motivation of a particular manager is very difficult to um, predict on a large scale uh, empirical piece of research. So accountants and managers may be simultaneously motivated by a sense of ethics and a need to manage powerful stakeholders. So a theory like stakeholder theory can give us important information, but it may not give us everything. So that's my very quick tour of stakeholder theory. I hope you enjoyed it. Coming right up, we're going to have a look at institutional theory. I'll see you then. Bye.